Hey, welcome back to Milton Daily Homes. Chuck here. We got a list of, uh, I think, 18 properties today. I'll try and go through nice and brisk, but give you really the core information of what you need to know. If you want to come meet me at Starbucks, there's a link just over on that side. We can talk about your plans, really get you set up on the right track. And there's so many people that try and do so much of this on their own. And to me, it's just, it's a, it's one of those things where you can save so much time and energy and heartache by actually having somebody like us who can walk you through the steps, get you better access to information, uh, walk through all the steps and the cost and everything like that. So anyways, if you're interested, it's over there. Let's get started with today's list. And so the first one up is 371 Bronte, number 102. 259 is pretty much the cheapest game in town right now. 266 on the maintenance fees is actually better than a lot of the condo uh, townhouse development. So they've, uh, it looks like they might have taken a wall down at some point. Uh, there are some original parts. There's a walkout basement here. Uh, you will probably have to do some work in this one to get it up to, uh, to snuff. But again, I mean, the price point is just something where you just you don't see many homes at that price. So it's going to get some attention for sure. 1380 Main Street, number 301 is at 294.9. And it's a two bedroom. It's a Windsor model. So I think it's 1,002 square feet or something like that. Uh, it doesn't really say in here how many parking spaces there are. There's probably one spot. 255 on your maintenance fees does not include heater, hydro, or cable. You have to put those on top, but does, it does include your water plus your common elements. There's a party room, exercise room in there. So it seems okay. It seems like it, it's in line with what the Windsor sell for. Uh, most of the condos in Milton right now are hovering at about 300 bucks a square foot. So Dawson Crescent is 322.9. Gave some thoughts about Dawson Crescent earlier this week. Um, I look at it and I say, is it better to go to something like Bronte where the outside's covered? This is a 13-year-old house. So roof, windows, all the furnace, AC, all those things are looming on the horizon and you're kind of close to the train tracks. So I know that they're cheap. I know that there's no condo fees, but you buy something at 260 or 270 with the condo fees, you get all that stuff covered. Uh, as part of your maintenance costs, or do you jump up a little bit more into the 340, 350 range and get a Madame home that's five years old with, um, you know, with kind of similar size overall? So that's how I see it from here. Uh, everything looks clean and tidy here. It's one of the few spots on Dawson that actually backs onto some uh, some forests, some trees, and things like that, which is nice. Okay, so I would say they've priced it very competitively, especially given what else has been selling and what's been listing on the street. 271 Prosser's at 339. You've got a main floor sort of office area. You could do an exercise room. You could have a second small family room. It's a little colder on that level. Door in from the garage. You've got your uh, open concept kitchen with the living and no furniture here. You've got a nice looking kitchen with some backsplash there. Uh, master bedroom plus two others in the front. And it's freshly painted, it's got new floors. It faces the train tracks, and I've talked about that in past episodes. You do hear that noise, but the thing is, is that you don't have neighbors right in front of you. So there's some people that actually like just having the sloped berm right there. You've got a hill right in front of you with gardens and all the rest of it. Uh, it's very fair priced, I think. 339 looks good. Cargill Path is 394. And so we've got an Emery model, 1370 square feet. It seems high. There's been Emery's that have sold in the last 30 days for a lot less than this that have very similar features. So two full bathrooms upstairs. It's a nice layout. And the thing that a lot of people don't know about the Mattamy townhouses is that if you have an inside townhouse, you actually have a right of way over your neighbor's property to get your, um, like your, your uh, lawnmower. <laughs> Can't believe I forgot that word. Your lawnmower through so so you could have a neighbor cut through your property you can actually cut through the neighbors because they don't have direct access from the garage into the backyard they elected to put more house there instead and from the builder's standpoint i can see why because they're selling on square footage and if you can pack more square footage in they're going to sell for more money so anyways that's the thing you need to know about those what some people do is they do a shed there and if their neighbor has a shed then they know that they basically are not going to cross over into their uh into their backyard so um, usually not a big deal, but we find people sometimes get surprised when they're showing homes and they are seeing homes on showings and they go, what's, what's that gate about in the back? 
and we talk to them and it's usually uncomfortable and then they say, well, at the end of the day, it is what it is. Houston is 399, semi-detached finished basement. Not a huge house. It's got this little area here. It's a little hazardous for kids, but it's it's small. This area is not huge. It's actually a neat floor plan. If you're into it, it's a nice little space, but it is definitely not the largest f like main floor I've ever seen in my life. Uh, finished basement is nice. And the nice thing about the finished basement is because the staircase is open, you get a bit of natural light off the back windows that actually goes into the basement. So $399, um, it, I don't know if, if it's blown me away. It's really, I don't think it'll be a price objection as much it'll, as it'll be kind of a layout objection. Uh, Thompson, this looks like a Linwell end, $399. Um, although it's a semi-detached, so it's probably a different model. Uh, it's definitely over 1,500 square feet. And then you've got, uh, it's on Thompson, right? So you're going to hear the no noise from the cars. Short read is, this is the Linwell end that I was thinking of, 1,681 square feet. 424, you've got some California shutters here. No hardwood floors. Um, not too hard to put in, probably five grand to put it on the main floor. And the bonus here is that you're backing onto the park. Now it says in the description, it's 15K that they paid. I don't know if they're gonna get that back. Uh, we have seen some of these models, like crap ones, crap, bad locations beside trains. Beside commercial, they're still getting over four. So for some reason, those models seem to be selling well. If these guys ride that crest, good for them. So Ferguson is 424.9. Semi-detached, looks like it has some sort of a basement apartment. The inside is not extremely pretty. Um, it looks like you can do two cars side by side in the driveway. It's just, it's okay to me. It doesn't look fantastic inside. And it's not a big place. It's probably 13, 1400 square feet. This one here on Hutchinson is 1500 square feet, 429 with a finished basement. And these models have kind of been going up. Every sale has actually sort of pushed the bar up. You'll see 420 with no finished basement, 425 with a finished basement, 425 without a finished basement. They keep really sort of going up and it's happened in a pretty short amount of time. So I don't know if, again, if these guys ride that wave, good on them, but it looks like a nice home and Hutchinson's a nice street too. Now McDuff is 474.9, it's 1740 square feet. It's called a Pilgrim model. You've got a long living dining here just off the entrance and then you have a family room that opens up to the kitchen. They do have the kitchen breakfast bar it's hard to put a table in here, so it's very difficult to um, to sort of arrange that. That's what you've got in your kitchen. So what a lot of people do is they turn that family room into a dining room so that there is a bit of flow between the kitchen and, uh, and where you'd have your meals. It's the four-bedroom version upstairs, so the other version is a three-bedroom with a big laundry. No finished basement. It's a little dated inside, so... <laughs> I would expect this one to probably not sell for 475. I would think that uh, they've left some room there to negotiate. Dolby Crescent is 514.9. This house is a Wyndham. It's uh, between 18 and 1900 square feet. It's a little bit wider because it's on the corner. Uh, it's right at the corner of Dolby and Wallace Way. It's not any weird spot facing dairy because there are some parts of, uh, of Dolby that do face. Um, I don't know if they've opened up the, uh, the upstairs there. Looks decent. The basement looks nice and finished. And there's a couple little nooks in the basement where you could do different rooms. 514 is still a bit of a stretch. Um, I Usually you've got to be more than 2,000 square feet with that finished basement to be up in that range. Tupper Drive is 514.9. This one here is another example. More than 2,000 square feet moldings. You've got a pie-shaped lot, which beats the other one the previous one we just reviewed, and uh, it actually looks pretty good. So this one would have more of a chance of selling for this number. Head to head, I think Tupper's got the uh, the previous guys. Tonelli is 555.9. Looks like there's some kind of a basement apartment separate entrance here too, but it just says there's one kitchen. Not a lot of details here, four bedrooms. We know it's a double car garage. Actually, that you know, the other thing about this one here, I did, this is facing Dairy, so it's right on the top part of Tonelli. You do have a busy road right in front of you. The Tonelli itself is not an especially busy street. There's a park just down the road. 
You get some nice views of the escarpment, but you are going to hear dairy for sure. So Valley View is uh, 669. And uh, so this one was listed last year and uh, decided to take a break, put it back out. It's got a nice floor plan. It's a really, really nice floor plan, probably 22, 2300 square feet, no finished basement. The real the real thing about this one, it's got nice separation on both sides and it's got a really big backyard and it backs onto 16 Mile Creek and it's beautiful. Check the virtual tour for some pictures. It's an unbelievable view. It's so private and nice and they tried it in the winter. Now that the trees are sort of in bloom and everything's coming back, I think that it's prime time for this property. People buy these lots and they hold on to them for a long time. They do not come out very often. Scott Boulevard is 3,900 square feet, and it's right on Scott. It's three doors down from Main Street, and um, I don't know. For me, if I had $800,000, I wouldn't want to live on Scott, personally. I mean, if it's one of those things, uh, to me, it's just a busy street. It is close to a big community park that's coming up. You get some views of the escarpment and everything else. Uh, the lot's not bad, 60 by 98, basically 100 feet. Um, it's just not my thing. I think if you're going to spend 800 grand, get on a street that really is nice and private. Kids can play hockey, all the rest of it. But I do see the value. I could see somebody coming in and paying these guys uh, close to this price based on what we've seen with other sales. Next up is Cunningham Court. It's at 1.2. Uh, it's 4,000 square feet plus an extra 1,800 down in the basement. You're on about four acres of property. And so if you look, it actually looks pretty decent inside. The kitchen looks good and updated. There are some homes in this area that are a little bit old fashioned. So they've done a pretty good job here. Some of the paint colors may not excite somebody because people get really picky over a million bucks. But it's got the size, it's got the property, it's got some nice landscaping here. Um, in fact, I mean, this almost seems like a good deal. Now, keep in mind that this property basically backs onto train tracks. So you will hear the train. It's not, as far as I know, it's not a, a hugely frequent train line, but there is a train. And it's very close by to this home. So be aware of that when you're uh, when you're showing it, just kind of keep your eyes and ears open for, uh, for what's around it. Now, Guelph Line is 3.86. It's a farm. We're dealing with extensive acreage. We're dealing with business use stuff with the farm. The house itself looks pretty dynamite. Um, you know, the kitchen obviously has had some work done. The double ovens, uh, the hood fan, the cupboards look really nice too. So, I mean, it's one of those things like you got to go see this one in person. It's very hard to uh, to quantify the value of something like this with actually, without actually going and seeing it. The farm facilities have their own special way of being assessed and then the house and the land and everything else. So there's, there's about five or six different angles you'd have to look at with a home like this to properly determine the value. So that's, uh, that's the list for today. If you have any questions, just give us a call. Be glad to help you. And we got that Starbucks there too on the side if you want to uh, just get together and have a chat. Have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow. You know, when it comes to keeping up with the latest real estate listings in Milton, a lot of people don't know Jack. Why? Because it can change big time from day to day, even hour to hour. That's why. So every morning, this Jack logs on to MiltonDailyHomes.com. And there's a million reasons why you should, too. For starters, they've had a million views and counting. So obviously, a few good men and women are checking out the plethora of in-depth information they have there. Daily listing reviews, fresh videos, price guides, buying classes, guided home tours, and more. Insight you just won't get by looking at an MLS. The truth is, if you're not visiting MiltonDailyHomes.com every weekday, maybe you can't handle the truth.